What's up, WordPress Warriors? It's Patrick Gallagher. It is Wednesday, July 1st. Uh, to those of you north of the border in Canada, happy Canada Day. Uh, for those of you here in the United States, um, hope you enjoy uh, 4th of July this coming weekend. Um, for those of you not in North America, just happy Wednesday. Hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Um, today we're going to be talking about the new backup system, which I know many of you are very interested in. Obviously, many of you have been very, very patient waiting for this thing to roll out. Um, and even more of you are just wondering what the hell it is. What does it do? Um, you're less concerned about the when as the what. And so hopefully we'll cover both of these things uh, in this video today. Um, first things first, a uh, little bit of housekeeping. Uh, if you have missed any of the previous sessions here, uh, previous webinar Wednesdays, any of the office hours on Mondays or Fridays, hopefully by now you will have seen that we added into the self-managed group. We've got a, a pinned post right now in the announcements um, for the replays of our customer success office hours and the, the webinar Wednesdays. It's linked up both in a Zendesk ticket, which is available via the help desk. So if you are searching inside the help desk, you can find it there. It's on our blog as well. It's currently pinned inside of our announcements in the group. It's on our YouTube page, um, but we're also going to try and make it potentially in the units section inside of the Facebook group. Um, we'll also put it on the Facebook page. Uh, we'll try to have it as many places as we possibly can. One thing that people have asked for is can we please get uh, like a timeline, you know, a, a a, um, a, a breakdown of at you know 97 seconds we talk about this etc uh, uh, a comment that I placed into the group is there's somebody that I know that's in a software as a service uh, founders mastermind that I'm in his company delivers a product that basically goes through all of your software and it does both transcription you know turns all of my rambling words into printed text but then it also creates those timelines automatically so we're talking to him, having him go through and sort of, sort of ingest all of our videos that we've ever created, and we'll be creating like an actual sort of a catalog that'll be much more accessible. We're working on that right now. I appreciate your patience. Obviously, um, you're all very, very busy. You don't have time to listen to 30 minutes of just nonsense. If really all you needed was the 30 second snippet, we will definitely make sure that if there are updates that need to be going out to the entire group, um, you know, things about updates to the platform, changes to the platform, new members of the team, etc. Those things, even if they are covered in any of these live video sessions, we will also, as appropriate, we will be updating everybody through all the conventional means. So if there's an update to the platform, clearly those things are going to end up in the change log. They're going to be updated on the roadmap page and, and things will be disseminated in all of the appropriate places. But the goal for both the office hours and webinar Wednesdays is obviously uh, on during the office hours to cover any live questions that you have. Uh, on webinar Wednesdays, our goal is to take a deep dive on a given topic uh, to give you more context to hopefully cover what, what isn't covered inside of the documentation and answer any questions that you might have and give you specific examples of what's going on. So not all sessions will be applicable to all people. And so clearly it would be useful for us to make it a little bit more accessible, make it easier to get to the information that you need. And so we are definitely working on that. Uh, other point of uh, housekeeping. So last week we had said that this week we were going to be doing PHP workers. Clearly we're not. We're, we're talk talking about the new backup system. We did cover PHP workers uh, in that uh, in the Q&A session in you know, last week. And we have subsequently, as a result of those questions um, and, and interaction with people during that session, we have made changes to the platform. And so we will be covering PHP workers most likely in the next Next webinar Wednesday session and you'll know once we're releasing all of that uh, but right now I think that we did cover that sufficiently at least as a, as a starter everybody got a taste everybody got some general context about how they should be thinking about workers in the context of um, how much traffic their site has what kind of uh, what kind of interactions and transactions people are conducting within your traffic flow and and customizations that you can be making and we linked up to some very very extensive documentation on those things so we're not going to be drilling into that today but we will do that soon uh, real quick well so briefly uh, for those of you that are not here in the United States that are not celebrating Independence Day this um, this coming weekend 
those of us in the United States are. So you should be able to see both in the chat interface and on the website, we're going to have our, our updated holiday hours. So just as we do around Christmas time, Thanksgiving, New Year's, we're going to have these windows where there's lower priority support and then going all the way to critical support only. Um, I appreciate your patience. We highly recommend that if it is the middle of 4th of July that you not do things to break your website. OK, uh, because we are going to have people standing by. Clearly, there's really no such thing as days off when you run a 24 seven global company. Uh, but obviously, we're trying to give everyone um, some time off, whether they celebrate uh, Independence Day here in the United States or not. Um, we try to give our team um, some time off and some regular holidays. And so that's happening. So be mindful of that. Uh, before we move on here to discuss more of the backup system, I do want to touch on every single one of these sessions that we've had. We've made subtle um, deviations. We've made subtle tweaks to what's going to happen. This last Monday, we did our, our, our office hours and we had some of the usual suspects, but all in, we had something like five people of which two or three was our own company. And we've also gotten some feedback from people um, down under, people in Australia, people in different time zones. They can't really get on to the sessions that we've had. So our goal is to move even further in the direction of having really polarized times that we run it um, on, on Mondays and then potentially on the updates or on webinar Wednesdays so that we can get more interactivity from people all over the world. But what we're also seeing is that by having literally 12 live sessions or interactive sessions or regular video updates there's a whole bunch of people who are just like yeah i'm not going to make it to every single one and that's totally fine but it's really too much okay and so i think what we're going to do is actually switch the office hours to every other wednesday uh, we will most likely do the exact same thing with these webinars as well we may do you know consecutive weeks in a row and then take two weeks off. We may do them every other Wednesday. If we have a bunch of new updates and we have a bunch of content that we want to put out, then we'll do four Wednesdays in a row. But we're not going to 100% commit to a schedule of showing up and doing a thing if we're not going to have people show up um, to actually ask questions, for example. So um, at the very least, you will be getting two office hours uh, on uh, every other Monday. You'll be getting at least two webinar Wednesdays every single month, and you'll be getting at least two Friday updates. But we're not guaranteeing consecutive weeks because there's just not enough interest for that right now. Um, but we will be trying to do our level best to, again, push those timelines out. It looks like if we do a 9 p.m. EST um, my time, then we can catch people in the morning in Australia, and we absolutely want to hear those voices. We want to get those questions answered. We want them to have an opportunity to interact with us uh, or just shoot the shit and whatever, whatever they want to do. So that's our motivation is to get more people involved um, and not necessarily have all of us just sitting around twiddling our thumbs. Okay. So let's dive in and talk about the new backup system. But before that, let's talk briefly about the old backup system, which uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, is powered by an open source system called Borg. Um, I don't know if they used the Star Trek uh, villainous aliens as motivation for that name. I'm, I imagine they did. Um, but if you don't know the context on the Borg and Star Trek, no worries. At the end of the day, though, um, just as in that show, um, the Borg ultimately are uh, bad, bad, bad uh, uh, demons that you do not want in the machine. And um, we are officially killing that system with this new backup system. So if you have ever had an issue related to not being able to do a staging push, for example, because you don't have an existing backup, those problems are going to go away. If you've had issues where you've had locked um, backup system locked, those issues are going to go away. All kinds of issues that we've had with the existing board backup system all of those things are going to be going away with this totally new platform. And uh, so we're going to be eliminating a lot of existing bugs. We're going to be eliminating a lot of points of tension. But we're also going to be introducing a whole heap of new features. Okay, And so let's talk briefly about those things. What specifically is under the hood with this new system? So for those of you that don't know, if you haven't seen any context about this new backup system at all, the, the new system is powered by uh, a software called Duplicacy, which you can just look up at Duplicacy. 
Advocacy.com. This is actually a chart that's pulled directly from their website. Um, so this last column all the way here on the right, this is grid pain, but this is also what you get if you go directly to dupl Duplicacy and you pay them $50 per computer per server, you can get these features. So incremental backups. Borg already did this. It didn't do it flawlessly. Um, this system does do that. Uh, it does full snapshots. Okay, that's that's a big one. It does both incremental, but you can also choose to do a full brand new snapshot. It has compression. Some systems that do incremental backups, that is just look at look and see what happened you know, between yesterday and today and only grab that. Some some um, backup systems, good backup systems do that, but they don't do compression. This system also compresses everything. It does deduplication, which we're gonna drill down on and talk about. This is something that the Borg system did as well, not as well as the new system, but it's super important, especially for those of you that have a lot of, ser well, a lot of sites on a given server and also a lot of sites across multiple servers all looking to pat, uh, push your backups to one particular remote backup solution. Um, encryption, obviously super important. Uh, deletion, as in being able to delete a given snapshot and everything attached to it, but not delete things before that and not delete things after that. That's a good feature. Concurrent access. This is a big one that we'll talk about briefly during this session. That is having, let's say you had servers on our platform where you're using our snapshot failover feature. Feature. So you have server A, that's the primary site, it's up and running all the time, and then DNS Made Easy is checking to see that that site is still running, and if it's not, it has it fail over to server B. What some of you may be asking yourself is, well now where does the backup come from if server B is in the picture? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that both of them are able to back up to the same third-party remote source at the exact same time, and they won't overwrite each other's data. So this is a totally unique feature to this duplicacy platform. Super, super cool. Um, to the best of my knowledge, no one else out there is doing anything quite like this in terms of cloud support options, in terms of the number pro of providers that you can push to. It's super extensive, we'll touch on that. And then the ability to migrate snapshots, to take all of your backups or a given snapshot from, say, Amazon S3 and move it over to Wasabi or move all of them from point A to point B, that's something that this platform does as well. So super extensive uh, lineup of features and I want to drill down on one of them that I think is super big that a lot of people don't necessarily understand and once you do understand it, you start to have that aha moment, the light bulb clicks on and you go, oh I can see how this is super, super efficient. And um, that particular feature is deduplication. Okay, So the concept of incremental backups is is obvious to a lot of people okay i had these all of these files and all of this data yesterday today the only difference is this little bit of data and this one new image so the incremental difference is just a little bit of data and this one image okay so we take an incremental backup of just those things makes perfect sense but what is deduplication okay so this is again this is something that the borg system used and it's something that the duplicacy system the new system does even better and to give you an example of what this all looks like i figured that i would start with uh, an image of a wordpress install um, i selected this image specifically from the internet because in our setup, we in a, a grid pane install, we have neither the wp-config.php file or HD access files in the root. So I specifically chose this image to confuse everyone. I apologize. Um, so what I want you to think of is this is a WordPress install. Okay, you have the WordPress core, which is you know some of these files visible here, a whole bunch of the stuff inside of WP admin and inside of WP uh, includes, and then you have your WP content folder. And inside your WP content folder, you have your plugins, you have your themes, you have your uploads. Okay, so everyone sort of understands a big broad strokes of what a WordPress install looks like in terms of the file structure and the directory structure. So I want you to imagine not having just one WordPress website. I want you to imagine having 12 WordPress websites, websites, okay, on a, on a single server. Or even better, let's imagine having 240 WordPress installs not necessarily on a single server, maybe on multiple servers, or let's take it even a step further and just say you have a thousand websites across all of your servers, um, all of your systems, all of your infrastructure providers. But now just think back again to that very first site, 
okay? One install, one copy of WordPress core, one copy of your themes, one copy of your plugins. The way that deduplication works is it looks at the backups that exist. And so in this example, let's say you have the exact same contact form on every single site across your 1000 sites. What the system does is it looks at that folder, that collection of files, it looks at all the data there and it creates basically a CRC. If you don't know about, um, about encryption or about file integrity checking, feel free to look up CRC. But basically what it does is it looks at that block of data and it says, and it, it creates an approximation, um, a CRC proxy to that data that's a big long random string of stuff. And it says, okay, I've backed that up. Well, what it does is if we look back at the example of a thousand sites, the first time that it backs up your contact form doodad, when it gets to the next site, if that site also uses that exact same contact form 7 plugin, for example, it goes, oh wait, I've already got that. It looks at the CRC and it says, I've already got that. Then it does the exact same thing with WordFence. It does the exact same thing with your themes, whether it's Oxygen or Divi or Elementor or all kinds of other things that are themes but aren't themes but are themes. It looks at those theme files and says, oh, yep, I've got those. If you've got Yoast, Local, Video, Pro, whatever, and you've got it installed on 500 different sites, it just looks at the newest copy of any theme, any plugin, and says, Yep, I've already got that. And critically, it does the exact same thing with core. So if you have 500 websites or 1,000 websites in this totally not visible visual representation, you only have one copy of core. And then if core gets updated tomorrow, you only have the incremental difference between core today and core tomorrow and only one copy. And then all the system does is for the other 999 sites, it just goes that same chunk, that last CRC there, this site also uses that. So you only have one copy of every single thing that you need for all of your sites. So you can start to get an idea of both locally, if you're backing up, say, 100 sites on one server, but in a larger scale, if you're backing up 10 different servers, all to the same remote third party, say AWS S3, you can see how it only needs to push a very small amount of data because you're very likely to use a lot of the same plugins, a lot of the same themes across all your sites. And so the only things that are getting pushed is the incremental changes of just the data that changes on a given site and just the uploads on a given site. Okay, so it's incredibly space efficient. It's, it's even more space efficient than the Borg system, which was very, very efficient, as some of you may or may not know, depending upon how far down the rabbit hole, rabbit hole you've gone with us. So um, now thinking about this in the, again, the big picture view of having multiple servers, what you might be thinking is, is well, what if server A has a newer version of an image for some reason, um, or there's a failover event that happens and now server B is also pushing to that remote third party, what happens? Well, this duplicacy system uses this lock-free deduplication method, and they are the only piece of software that does exactly this thing. And so you can't quite make out exactly what's happening here, but, if, but effectively what the system is doing is it's determining whether or not on the remote storage, as compared to the local storage, whether or not there are any fossils, basically old versions of files that it no longer needs, and then it starts to push the updates. And at any one time, this process is happening in such a way that if another process happens at the exact same time, it cannot complete fossil deletion until it knows 100% that there is no locks that exist between this, you know, server B is uploading a given file, which is maybe a newer version. I can't yet delete this. Um, this entire mechanism is totally proprietary and unique to them. And it, and it truly does allow you to have 10 different copies of the exact same site potentially running across numerous data centers all around the world, all pushing to the exact same independent third-party backup location. And there's no chance that an update in one place can overwrite an existing um, set of files and data from another install with the exact same site files. Okay. So we will most likely show a an actual demonstration of this um, soon where we actually change a file, show you what happens between two servers uploading to the same point. Um, but the long and short of it is, is that it's highly, highly, highly unlikely that no matter what happens across all of your servers, 
no matter where they are, no matter which infrastructure provider, complete power outages, all kinds of you know potential gotchas that would normally screw up a, a, a backup process, they can't actually overwrite or crush data. Um, and they also don't end up having random orphans. This fossil collection process does a really, really good job of identifying things that are truly fossils. And it does this two-stage process that determines definitively, yep, we don't need that fossil anymore. And then it goes through and wipes all of those things out. So um, now that we know sort of what it is and what it does, let's talk about where these things get stored. Okay, where do all of these backups happen? Well. The, the simplest one is locally, just like the, uh, the Borg system, the new duplicacy system, absolutely whenever it is enabled on a site-by-site -site basis or in the long run, you're going to be able to configure these things inside the site customizer as well. So every site on a given server, um, everything can push locally. Okay, And we highly recommend that because it is so space efficient. Uh, we highly recommend having a local backup because the likelihood that a whole data center is going to go down is very, very low. But setting that aside, the likelihood that you're going to have drive failure on a major provider is even lower than that. And so we strongly encourage you to have local backups. They don't take up a ton of space, but they make it very, very, very efficient for you to recover, to do staging pushes, basically to do backups before you do staging pushes. So we highly recommend having local backups. But as many of you have been asking, really what, what this update is all about for most of you is remote backups. Being able to push these super efficient, both in terms of size, bandwidth, um, files, uh, non-duplicated you know, non writes between multiple servers, being able to push all of these things off-site to any number of independent third-party uh, remote cloud sources. Um, and so let's take a look at what those providers are. Okay, so this is all of the providers that are supported by duplicacy. You've got Amazon S3, no big surprise, Dropbox, Google Cloud Platform, Black Backblaze, Google Drive, Wasabi, OneDrive, Azure, DigitalOcean, Hubic, I don't even know what that is, um, SFTP servers, and local disks. Now, you can see the check marks on there. These are the currently implemented working right now options on within our new system, our implementation of this backup system. So local disks, obviously, it writes to your local disk just as though it is a remote disk. It doesn't see them any different. It's just much, much faster, obviously, because it's right there. Um, Amazon S3, Backblaze, B2, and Wasabi, all of those are baked in and integrated right now. If you have this turned on for yourself, which we will talk about, those of you who do, those of you who don't, when, all of the above. Um, those of you who are using the system right now, you can enter in these details inside of your settings, and these are the ones that are working right now. You'll see our glasses next to Dropbox, SFTP, and DigitalOcean. These are all providers right now that we are still testing that are working but are not yet built into the UI. Okay, so even if you're on the backups beta, you have a developer account, you're an LTD user, and you were one of the first people in, and you're using these right now, so you know who you are, you also know that the API interface to drop in um, your Dropbox API to use that for backups, it's not in the UI yet. Okay, and so we'll talk about when that's going to happen. The other ones that don't have hourglasses by them and don't have check marks by them, OneDrive, for example, Google Cloud Platform, Google Drive, the catch with some of these is that there is no automated mechanism which will allow us to say, hey, Google Cloud, we want to use your storage options, okay? And then, and then just fire an API out to them and have, these, have this thing magically work. What you have to do is manually go turn those things on, download a token file, and then give the duplicacy system access to that token file. Needless to say, things that are not easy to automate don't get automated. Things that are a total pain in the ass, it's, it's hard to build them. So right now we do not have a definitive timeline on the ones that, that have neither a check mark nor an hourglass by them. We have no definitive timelines on when those things are going to be fully implemented into the UI because as of right now, there's no way, even if we had that, that it would be a totally turnkey automated process. Okay. So when there are things that you have to do manually, 
um, our normal predisposition is to just create a knowledge base article and let you do those things. And so what I can say is that once all of these things, all of the ones that are um, that are checkmarked or that have the hourglass on them, once those are all built into the UI and we're at the next stage, we will either figure out ways to automate those things, which looks like for some of them that will never be possible, or, as I said, we will write the knowledge base articles that will allow you to integrate them yourselves manually if you absolutely have to have them. Um, if you see your preferred platform with uh, a hourglass by it, or you really want one of these other ones, by all means, feel free to go to the roadmap, the feature request area, and vote these things up if they're there already, or add them if they are not there currently. Um, one repeated question that we get over and over again is who gets what based upon your platform level. So if you're a free user and you're watching this, you don't get anything. Okay, You get the new backup system and it will do backups locally, but you do not get remote backups other than to use whatever plugin you want to to push to remote backup providers, digital, you know, um, Dropbox, whatever you can use, Updrafts Plus, or yeah, Updrafts, their free edition lets you push to Dropbox, for example, so I highly recommend doing that, but if you are a pro user right now, you're going, well, if you have access to the system and you are a pro user, as of right now, local disks, obviously, and Amazon S3 are going to be your two options for the foreseeable future. Developer users are going to get access to any and all of them. Okay, developer users, and you can see the plus there. So if you're on enterprise or your agency um, or Apollo, etc., uh, all of these options are going to be available to you. Again, with the proviso that some of these can't be automated at all, and so you would have to use the knowledge base theoretically to to implement Microsoft OneDrive. Okay, um, but again, this is all contingent upon whether or not. The, this has been activated for your account and whether or not they're completed or they're you know currently in testing currently in development okay so um, Amazon s3 the most prolific one all pro users are going to get access to that um, developers get access to the whole lot okay so when do we get this um, this has been the question for many many months uh, our objective was to get this out in q1 we are now into q3 obviously um, this is much, much, much later than we ever wanted this to be, um, but it's also been by far one of the largest overhauls um, that we've had to do within the entire platform. We literally had to go back to the drawing board numerous times and throw out the entire lot, um, both at the script level, everything that we're happen everything that's happening at the server level, and within the application itself. And we are still working specifically within the UI to add in all of these things. So. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Let's talk about when these things are actually going to be rolling out. So what comes next specifically and what do timelines look like? Well, so first of all, if you're wondering when you're going to get this, this is actually already installed on all of your servers. It just has not been activated. If you are on any of the wait lists, whether you filled out the checklist, whether you have a ticket inside of Zendesk, all of you, if you have not already been addressed, all of you should be fully running both local and your preferred remote any one of the green check marks okay some of you will have access to the ones with the um, with the hourglasses okay so like um, Dropbox for example or SFTP some of you will have access to that but all of the green check marks including like for example some of you are in Europe and you wanted to be able to push to the new European Wasabi data center, those things are now working inside of internal testing. I know you in particular, a handful of you have been waiting on that for GDPR reasons. All of those should be done and fully rolled out and, and testing by end of business on July 10th, okay? Um, throughout this week, um, the rest of this week and this weekend, there's going to be some members of our team that are off, you know, for the 4th of July holiday, but we're going to be plugging additional people in that, you know, we're just going to keep working through that list as quickly as we can. Um, so the timeline for people that are already on the wait list, worst case scenario should be July 10th. You should be up and running both locally with the new platform and your preferred remote provider of your choosing. If you don't want to use a remote provider, no need. Okay, we highly recommend it, but you don't have to. You can be on the new backup system. Um, should be by the um, the end of business, Friday, uh, July tenth. What comes after that? Okay, what's the next priority? Well, we're already rolling out these new interface features for the additional providers. That will be the next step, and that should happen around say 
middle of uh, middle of July, third week of July, we should start to see a couple of additional providers in there. Um, hopefully by the end of the month, beginning of next month, um, first week, August, we're going to have additional customizations in there where you're going to be able to adjust intervals, frequency, you know, all the settings that you should have been able to do for the last year, really, with the existing backup system um, that you've had to manually do via cron jobs, those are now going to all be within the UI itself. Okay. If you want to adjust custom, if you want to customize frequency and interval um, right now, we can show you how to do those things. We have documentation for those things um, that we will provide you with in terms of adjusting crons. Um, but all of those customizations will then go into the UI um, and ultimately you're going to be able to choose multiple providers. If you're on developer, you're going to be able to pr pick two, three, possibly four providers that you could that you could like cycle through and you could say, okay, two times a day I wanted to go to, um, or you know, every 12 hours I wanted to go to Dropbox and then the opposite 12 hours I wanted to go to Backblaze, for example. Um, so you can get super, super um, redundant with all of this. After that, the goal then is going to be what we're calling rapid remote recovery, okay? We've teased this out inside the Facebook groups a little bit. The idea with this, this is really the next evolution of this entire, of everything that we're trying to build here. Um, and it's part of the reason that, that, we've, that we've had to rebuild so many things over and over and over again, is the idea is that you could theoretically screw up, nuke your entire server, and be back up in minutes. Okay, so that's going to be sort of the last, you know, f final checkbox for us in this whole rollout is that we eliminate a lot of existential concerns about even human error, <laughs> which we've all we've all made mistakes. Um, and and our goal with this platform is that you can literally just turn back the clock an hour on brand new servers and be back in business. And theoretically, regardless of the remote stuff, we will be updating everybody for local and killing Borg entirely for local and, and obviously for remote. We're thinking end of life for Borg um, around 30 days from now. Um, so again, setting aside you know, the existing it working remote backups, uh, the, the other ones that are coming up that have those, those hourglasses, the still other ones in the knowledge base articles, setting all that stuff aside, we want to have everybody up to the new local system, pro um, developer, doesn't matter the account tier, um, even free users, if they're getting, if they're using local backups, um, they should be off of Borg 100% by, um, by August 1st. That's what we're shooting for. So, um, uh, so that's all we have for right now. Um, I'm sure I've missed something. That's where your questions come from. So right now, um, we don't have any. And again, the reason we don't have any is we had hardly any attendance on uh, Monday. Since Monday, we've had no follow-on questions. Um, obviously, we're going to get questions out of all of this. So get those things ready. Any questions that you have, feel free to peg them inside of the thread inside the Facebook group. Uh, as appropriate, we will update them and answer them live within that thread. But if we need to, we can push them into the next office hours, which possibly will be this coming Monday, but most likely it will be the following Monday because, again, we're going to move towards every other week, and we're going to see if we can get that in around a timeline that hits um, sub, some of the Southern Hemisphere uh, members of the grid pain family. Um, so look for that around the 13th. So for now, the next update that you should be getting is probably going to be a brief update on Friday because we do plan to push some updates into the platform. It will not be a lengthy drawn out affair uh, because, um, because of the 4th of July holiday and us being off. Um, so, you know, as always, just Thank you for your patience. Please be patient with us as we roll these things out, as the subsequent um, updates to the platform, those updates roll out. You know where to find us. If you have serious issues, if you have serious concerns, um, you can get us in support 24-7. But if you just want to follow in and um, get involved in this particular con conversation, you know where to do so right within the Facebook uh, group, in the self-managed group. And um, yeah, again, uh, happy holidays to those of us in North America, and uh, enjoy the rest of your week um, or wherever you are. So thanks for your time, everybody. Cheers.